Hello everyone. We're here today at our annual visit to Autism Awareness Day with the Giants, and I'm pleased to be speaking with Public Relations Coordinator Tess Oliphant, who's going to be telling us all about it. Tess, what can you tell us about Autism Awareness Day? So Autism Awareness Day is an event that's held every year here at the ballpark, and it's led, the charge is led by Giants legend Will Clark. So Will is a driving force to raise awareness for autism and to really help our fans understand the importance of research, the importance of understanding um, those who are living with autism spectrum disorders and, and how we're all one community. And, and that's the real, the real impact today is, is getting these communities together to enjoy baseball together. Excellent. How many years has this been going on now? You know, I would have to double check that. Um, it, it's been going on for quite some time. Um, it's a long-standing commitment that the Giants have and will continue to have um, for the foreseeable future. Excellent, and we're very pleased to see that. Over the years that you've been overseeing this or been involved with this, how has it changed? So it's changed because we've gotten so much more drive from the community. It started as a little bit of a smaller event, and it's really become something that is is something that people look forward to every single year. You know, people mark their calendars days in advance, weeks in advance, months in advance, because they know that this is is an exciting event here at the ballpark. Awesome. Well, yeah. thank you. Absolutely. It's been great. Yeah, this has been, what, our fourth year doing this? Um, it's been wonderful to get to know you all. Well, we've been glad to be able to do it with you and support the Giants yeah. and Autism Awareness. Day. Absolutely. Great. Thank you. Thank you. So, Tess, could you uh, mention some other community events? Sure. So, the Giants have a different community event going on every single game here at the ballpark. So, we partner with local nonprofits throughout the Bay Area to help raise awareness for their causes. As you know, the Bay Area is so diverse and there are so many people that are working every day to raise awareness for something important. And what we try to do is use this platform that we have and use this voice to connect with our fans mm -hmm. for reasons that they may not see at another baseball game, but it's, you know, we have a captive audience here and we really like to use that platform to help amplify the voices of those doing community work. Oh, that, that's wonderful. And I, I asked this question last year to Amy G, and I think it's worth repeating. Do you think, um, do they and you and everybody think the world's have broader minds now over everything? Yes, yeah. and, and we hear it a lot that, you know, there's some people that want their sports to only be about sports. And mm -hmm. that's just not the way that the industry is anymore. The, you know, our players, our coaches, our organizations are taking a stand for things that they believe in. And that's how the game has changed. It's, yeah. it's a platform now and athletes are using their platform and their voice to really uh -huh. help those that they, that they believe in. Uh -huh. And it's always been more about sports. It's entertainment too. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and you see things with different movements, with athletes or with actors or musicians, you know, everybody has something that they're passionate about yes. and they're using their voice to try to amplify that. Wonderful. Thank you, Tess. Absolutely. I understand there's going to be a panel about autism awareness. Can you tell us more about the panel? Absolutely. So our panel is going to be moderated by Amy G, who is our in-game broadcaster here at the ballpark. And Will Clark will be joining her as well. And we're also joined today by um, community leaders from Autism Speaks and from ANOVA. And so you guys will have the, the opportunity to meet with all of those folks throughout the day. Hi, I, I'm, I'm Will Vernick. I'm back at, 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 I'm here at the Oracle Park for Autism, Autism Awareness Night. I'm here with Wesley Lamb. Wes, tell us about your involvement with the Giants. Well, I've been involved with the Giants like as a first as a fan since I was a little kid when Barry Bonds was playing for the team and he broke Aaron he broke Hank Aaron's 747 home run record in 2007, and I also supported the team during the World Series runs in 2010, 2012, and 2014, as well as their playoff run in 2016. So I've been a huge Giants fan for all my life, especially going to the Giants games, especially Giants Fan Fest, in which my first one was in 2016. Tell us about your involvement with the autism community. Well, I have been involved best in the autism community by being a volunteer for Best Buddies since 2016, since I was introduced by you, Mr. Burnick, and I've ever since then I've been doing a lot for Best Buddies, including the friendship, having them in the friendship walk, as well as the Champion of the Year campaign, just to name a few. And I'm also a buddy director for the USF chapter in San Francisco. 
Hi, I'm I'm back at Oracle. Pa I'm Al. I, this time I'm here with Alex Buttery. Alex, can you tell us about your support? Uh, how long? Can you tell us about how you supported the Giants? Uh, I've been a supporter of the uh, days of Will Clark and uh, Matt Williams, and been a fan ever since. And my involvement with autism, I work with uh, kids with autism, as a teacher's aide. Now tell us about your support with the autism community. I uh, have joined the Ascend, and I uh, work with Best Buddies, and like I said, I'm a teacher's aide for the San Francisco Unified with uh, autism. Here's my here's my support for the Giants. I I, I really like uh, the, the because I ever I've been a fan since I was a little kid uh, playing in the little leagues and uh, and I like and I do th and I do think that, uh, that and and also that it's it's a lot of uh, fun to go coming into the ballpark at Oracle Park. Excellent. Have you been part of uh, Autism Awareness Day before? I have been part of Autism Awareness Day before, a, a while for for Ascend for the Ascend party at the house. Excellent. And what's your involvement with the uh, autistic community, Sloan? Uh, my involvement is. Uh, is 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 just uh, is is uh, is uh, uh, my involvement is uh, to get to get to keep it to keep it going and just let it just uh, it's real it's a little bit it's a little challenging it can be indeed well thank you very much Slo. Yeah. okay now I'll be speaking with Andrew Bixler Andrew what has been your involvement with the uh, Giants oh well I well I've known well I've well, first of all, I can at least remember Trevor Wilson and Willie McGee, and uh, and and yes, just like and I've yeah, and I've been a and I've been a fan for a few since childhood, yes, and uh, well, and usually with and usually with my dad, we get at least one ticket for each month during the sea during the season, and. Uh, and usually, and usually, I come to Fan Fest. Yeah, always an, that's always an exciting moment, you know. And uh, well, and I'm glad as usual to be back here to Autism Awareness again. Mm-hmm. Have you been involved with Autism Awareness? It sounds like you have. How many of these have you been involved with? How many games here? How many Autism Awareness days have you been involved with? Mm, well, well, I'm I. I'm, I'm not sure exactly, but uh, but but you but I'm another but I am in partnership with Ascend, and uh, and I hope this fall I can get back to Best Buddies. Uh -huh. Excellent. So have these been uh, the ways you've been involved with the autistic community? Yeah. Well, at oh, well at least well at least there well at least. At least there's one. At least there's one in particular. That's there's one in particular for you. Excellent. Well, thank you very much, Andrew. Appreciate it. And enjoy the game. Yes. Okay. Ready? And go. I'm now pleased to speak with the legendary Will Clark, who's responsible for all of this. Will, how did you do this? How did you begin Autism Awareness Day? You know, uh, we have a son who's now 23 years old, and he's a little bit autistic, and so we got involved through the Giants doing autism night here at the ballpark and it went from being a weekday and not a lot of people being at the ballpark to being a night game on a weekend and having a lot of people really here to support autism awareness. Excellent. I've heard over the years its response has grown and grown and I think that's due in no small part to you and yours. Well thank you. That's very nice of you. Yeah our response has grown and grown and uh, I'm keeping my fingers crossed the ballpark is packed tonight and we have a lot of people that are here to support autism. Excellent. Thank you very much for your time, Will Carp, and go Giants. Thank you so much. Y'all have a great one. All right. Go Giants. Yeah. Go Giants. Go. Here we are. We're going to be filming the panel that Will Clark will be speaking on. This is uh, Stacey Kennedy speaking at um, Autism Awareness Day, July 6th, and thank you. So here I am with Will Clark. He's about to speak on a panel. So Will, um, 
Well, you're going to be asked questions. What do you plan to talk about? Well, we're going to talk about autism and autism awareness night here at the ballpark and probably how the Giants have really done a great job in creating autism awareness yes. and uh, try to get some, uh, some people here to have some fun before the Giants game. Wonderful. That's so great. And uh, so, oh, shoot, sorry. It's all right. Um, so what do you what do you what do you expect from tonight? Well, we're gonna have a nice turnout today. We're gonna have a big check presentation at home plate, and then hopefully after that, the Giants win the baseball game against the Cardinals. Wonderful. There you Thank go. you. All right, my pleasure. Here we are with Amy G, who we um, interviewed last year. Um, what's your last name, or do you just prefer yeah. Amy G? Oh no, my last name is Gutierrez, but nobody knows that. Okay, okay, so just Amy G. Just want to make sure. That's what people call me. Okay, so Amy G, um, how do you feel about tonight? I'm always very humbled and excited to be a part of a night like tonight. I get to work alongside my friend Will Clark, and it's such a worthy cause. And I think spreading awareness about anything is important to do. Absolutely, yeah. I like just how it's all about diversity for me, especially you know for Fourth of July, we're celebrating America, but for me, it should all be about diversity, everything for sure. And we just spoke to um. Will a while ago, and so um, I think I think what he's expecting tonight is maybe reactions from you know both sides of the teams or so. So um, what do you think? What do you want to get out of this? Well, I think the um, point of tonight is to just continue to expand the message that autism needs um, help and it needs money to be raised and that it's a, a real disorder that people deal with and there are ways to make it easier and um, make things easier for families who are trying to afford care for somebody in their family on the spectrum and that there are ways to make things a little bit easier. Absolutely. It's just like, you know, if someone with autism, they feel they, they're just lost in thought or if they're doing some kind of like, how would you say no, Rich? Well, maybe, yeah, doing something. It's like, you know what, to everyone else, it should not be a big deal. It's just no different than somebody sneezing or coughing. It's just let them do what they have to. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, That's their path. Absolutely. Absolute, exactly. Path. Thank you so much, Amy. Thank you yeah. for having me. Absolutely. Thank you. Good to see you guys. You too. Our diagnosed. An estimated one in 59 children in the United States is on the autism spectrum. And each year, on average, a family with a loved one on the autism spectrum spends $62,000 a year in care. So tonight, the beneficiaries, I haven't introduced you yet. Tonight, the beneficiaries of our event are Autism Speaks and ANOVA, two organizations that work really hard to spread education, awareness, and funds to families who are dealing with autism and, and help meet their needs. So, you know who this is, but I, it's my job to introduce him, and um, I love working with this guy because I actually grew up in the Bay Area, I'm a San Francisco Giants fan, and obviously a huge fan of Will Clark, the baseball player, and, right, who is it? But I'm a bigger fan of Will Clark, the human being. And he is an amazing person who has lent his name and his heart to this cause. It is near and dear to Will and his family. They are here, your wife Lisa and your daughter and your son Trey. And um, let's just start with, if you would, share your connection. For those of you who don't know, Will's connection to autism and, and why you got involved. Uh, well, uh, as most of you guys have known, because uh, many of y'all have been here for a few years now, uh, our son is uh, 23 and he was uh, autistic. Uh, he has uh, high functioning, and so he, he has worked through it quite a bit. Absolutely loves baseball for what apparent reason, I don't know. Um, but uh, from time to time, uh, you know, if you guys come to the ballpark and stuff like that, you'll see him on the field. He, he jags balls and has a good time. Sometimes he's a bad boy. And uh, about 12 years ago, I guess, the San Francisco Giants had come to me and said that we need a spokesperson for autism. And so I raised my hand and I said, I will be the spokesperson. So a lot of times an athlete or a celebrity, whatever it might be, has a platform. And uh, I chose 
to use autism as my platform and to make as much awareness of it as possible. This is amazing. I think a round of applause for Will Clark. I'm just saying. Hello, Will Clark. So in our audience here, how many um, parents do we have of an autistic child? Okay. And so, Will, will you share with the parents here kind of your perspective? And, and it's, a, it's difficult to find out the news. It's difficult to get that diagnosis and, and maybe how you learned to um, cope with that news and change it into a real positive. I, I, I love that question right there because, uh, you know, it was one of those things I found out actually when I was playing and I was on the road and my wife found out and so I had to fly back off the road and, uh, you know, this was when computers were in their infancy. And so, you know, my wife, you know, went out and bought a computer and, um, and then started to uh, do a lot of research. And then after the research, it was reach out and find out where we could go to get as much treatment as possible. And since then, um, you know, we've, we've spent time in Baltimore, we've spent time in St. Louis, we've spent time in Dallas. So we've, we've had a lot of, um, I guess you want to say facilities around. And now being a spokesperson, especially here in the Bay Area, I'm getting a lot of parents that reach out to me and say, you know, where can we go? What can we do for our children? And uh, so it's, it's pretty cool that Autism Speaks and ANOVA are, are two of the organizations that we deal with, but I can get answers for these parents pretty quick. This is amazing. What piece of advice would you share with the parents here? Like what, what have you learned in your time with Craig? Oh, you know what? I mean, uh, I kind of, it's kind of my theme every year, but it, it's so true. With the autistic community, um, celebrate any victory, however small, however minute it is, because it is um, extremely important to that individual. So whatever little positive gain you see, whatever you know, positive action you might see, a smile, a hug, anything, anything out the ordinary, celebrate it and make it a big deal. I feel like um, the autistic community in general gets uh, really misjudged. What do you feel are the things that we can do here as a society to help spread the word uh, about the disorder and, and let people know that they are misjudging or they're misconstruing or they're misunderstanding exactly what's going yeah, on? Yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, um, the one thing that I was not very good at early in my life was patience, and uh, I have gotten to be pretty good at it now. And uh, you know, as as uh, some many of you parents know, um, you know that's that's one thing that uh, you know has become uh, not only myself but also my wife is uh, one of our strengths. And uh, you know, patience and, and understanding what's going on not only with your family, but also some of the other families that you see around. And hey, we're all in the same boat and we're pulling for one another. What would you tell folks here who are autistic? Like, what would you say to them as an encouraging word? Some of them have some questions. Like yeah, yeah, matter of fact, uh, Miss Lori, who's been here a few times, you know, she, she talked about being bullied and stuff like that. And I told Lori, I said, you know, I'm here to fight for you and you know, I mean, Stand up for yourself because you are a special person in, in not only your eyes, but also your family's eyes. So stand up for yourself, okay? I'm telling you, Will Clark will fight for you. He will go to bat for you, for sure. Before we get to the fan questions, though, we definitely want to hit a little bit of baseball because we've got Will here, so let's get some baseball knowledge. And can you believe it's been 30 years, Will? 30, 30 years! years. We all look yeah. exactly the same. I, what, I mean, first memory that pops up from the 89 season for you? First, uh, first memory from the 89 season was, uh, you know, I guess, uh, you know, we had been in the playoffs in 87, and we came real close, and then, you know, 88, we came back with a, you know, an enthusiasm, we wanted to get back to the World Series, and, and that was it, and then, didn't happen in 88, but 89 was a magical season, and then, uh, you know, wound up having the Bay Bridge World Series, and uh, as you guys know, there was a little um, rocking and rolling yeah, in the middle of that game right, right there, yeah. um, so, but, uh, you know, it was, it was good getting to the World Series in 89, and on top of that, you know, from a giant standpoint, from a San Francisco standpoint, 
was the fact that in 1985 the team had lost 100 games. And so that was the first time ever in franchise history. So myself, Robbie Thompson, Matt Williams, uh, Kurt Manware, and a few other guys, they, they start bringing these kids on board, and then all of a sudden the whole organization sort of turned around. You guys are kind of seeing a little of this right now yourselves. Uh, you know, I mean, with the World Series that we had in 10, 12, and 14, and then now you're seeing some of the young kids that are coming around. You're seeing the Yastrzemski's, Dickerson's, you know, Solano's, guys like that. So, you know, we're having a new influx of talent right now, and it's, it's pretty special to see. Yes, we're in a building year. Building year is what we call it in the media. <laughs> Uh, who are you? August 11th, guys, mark your calendars because that's the reunion, the 30th reunion, and Will will be here. Who are you most looking forward to seeing, and who are you most looking forward to not seeing? <laughs> <laughs> Why did you have to say, say that second one there? Have some fun with this. Yeah. All right, so, uh, so, you know, when you spend a whole year in the, in the clubhouse with guys, and then you're not able to see them for a long time, there's really there's really not one person that stands out. You know, I like to see everybody, I mean, because they were all my, my teammates, but Kevin Mitchell is always so funny. I mean, he is so funny. And, uh, you know, he and I spent a lot of time in the middle of the lineup, so I'm looking forward to seeing Kevin. And then uh, probably the guy that uh, I don't want to see, oh, th th there are none of those guys. I mean, because, because it was such a special year, I mean, you know, you're going to have little... Uh, altercations, family, shall family, we say, family. yeah, family meetings, yes. shall we say, and uh, they had it, a, it was a lot more frequent back then, they, these guys now, man, they, they're like, oh, I can't say nothing to him, I'm like, yeah, you ought to go say a few things to him, hey, when you hit the 210, somebody needs to say something to you, I agree, I agree for sure, and if y'all are wondering if Will can, can still swing the bat, where were you, where were you today? I was in the batting cage. <laughs> it's it's kind of it's kind of funny. It's kind of funny because uh, uh, in in doing these kind of things, you know, you get invited to a few things here and there. And we have a uh, celebrity home run derby at our Double A affiliate, which is Richmond, Virginia, and that's on this Tuesday coming up. And so I said, well, I'm not going in after not having taken a swing. So I've taken batting practice about five times in the last week, and I was like, I told Amy earlier, I was like, uh oh. I said, it's coming back pretty quick. <laughs> yeah, it comes back said, pretty quick, yeah. I said, I better get out of the cage, otherwise I might want to take somebody's job. <laughs> he did not act for ego. That is why he was so successful. Um, I do want to end it on an autism note. You know, we're talking about it's been 30 years since that World Series. It doesn't seem possible. But from when you first found out Trey's diagnosis to today, to end on a positive note before we take questions from the fans, where have you seen the awareness come? I think the awareness, I, I, that's a great question. I think the awareness has gone up quite a bit with the advent of the disorder. I mean, you, you gave the numbers right there. You know, when, when I first got involved with it, it was one in 500 or something like that now. What is it, one in 43 boys or something like that? Boys, yeah. And uh, so with yeah. the advent of the disorder getting more prevalent, you know, I've seen awareness come way up. And, uh, you know, we're, we're not only getting awareness out there, we're getting R&D, you know, and one of these days we're going to beat this thing. For sure. Yeah. Okay, so we want to thank you because of your purchase of tonight's ticket, you're raising money for ANOVA and for Autism Speaks. So thank you very much. And let's open the floor for questions for Will. Anybody? Yes, all right. What's a nook book? That would be my great grandma's maiden name, which in the South, uh, you know, you're given a family member's name and it became my middle name. Uh, my dad was Bill, I'm Will, and our son wasn't gonna be a Billy or a Willie, and so he's, he's William the third, so we called him Trey for three. So, we'll play on words. And if we'd had a, and if he has a son, he'll be Drew for four. <laughs> Quadruple. Hey, see? See? Make it ahead here. I will share a really quick story that I have about Will. Newsler is his middle name, and I had a, a girlfriend that I worked in television early on who had the biggest crush on Will Clark, and her dog was named Newsler. 
And I remember saying, where'd you get that name? I hope he, I hope he listens he better than really I do. Cute. He was really cute. He was really Yes. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Why, well, thank you. I appreciate it. And it was great. It was great that we got a chance to find your stuff. And we took pictures together. She didn't abandon you this year, all right? And your husband's so confident through all this. I love that. Good job. A plus. Yes. Oh, my goodness. That was... That was the big thing, playing for the San Francisco Giants, all right, and watching the crowds in the Bay Area, like, completely turn around, because when I first started coming to San Francisco, there were about, I don't know, about 10 or 15,000 people, and then all of a sudden, for the World Series, in the playoffs in 87, there were 60,000 people in Candlestick Park, so it was a lot of fun playing in front of a lot of people, and they were all yelling, go Giants. And they were really happy because there were bodies to keep them warm next to them. Body yes. warm. Yes. I was one of those in the 10,000. Crazy. Yes. Oh, very good question. Did I have a favorite player growing up? I had two of them. Uh, it was George Brett and Mike Smith. All right. And you're going to think, all right, one's left-handed, one's right-handed. But they, they hit for power. Yeah, and they were third baseman. But they hit for power, they hit for a high average, they were team leaders, you know, they, they were all stars, stuff like that. And so another story on top of that was we were in Candlestick and we're playing against the Phillies and Mike Smith's hitting. And it's in about the eighth, I guess, something like that. And he hit a little ground ball down the third base and Matt Williams came charging in and just couldn't make the play. So Mike got a base hit and that was, that was the, the only hit he had that day and he had an error. He was having a little rough day. And so he's on first base. And he goes, he goes, all right, well, that's it. And I'm, I'm figuring, okay, you know, he's, he's like going to have a pinch runner come in. You know, he's going to take the rest of the day off, that kind of thing. No, he decided he was going to retire. And so I'm like at first base, and I'm like, no, you can't. <laughs> you, you're my idol. I can't retire. I can't be the first person to know this. <laughs> and sure enough, they flew back to Philadelphia the next day, and he retired. <laughs> follow-up question on your favorite players, which because you had the chance to meet both of them, and obviously Mike was lived up to expectations, but, you know, was he George? Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, I, I played against George when I was with the Rangers, and uh, super guy, and, uh, you know, he was transitioning from being a player into the front office, and he's done a great job over there. He was too much here. Yeah. I knew you, I knew you, I knew you. Well, folks, for today's program of Ascend TV Life on the Autism Spectrum at Oracle Park for Autism Awareness Day, I'm Keith Halperin. I'm Will Burnick. I'm Stacy Kennedy. And I'm Jennifer Brooks. Until next time, best to you and go Giants! Go Giants!